This little bike saved my behind last night, and I've noticed that I've had a lot of views on my first review of this particular bike. This is the Cyclomatic CX2 folding electric bike, and um, I've put a couple modifications, well not modifications, I've put a, uh, a pannier bag on it, but other than that, oh and uh, two lights, but other than that it's pretty much the same as how it comes, and I try, I'm thinking I'm going to try and do a bit of a more organized review this time, because it was really rambly last time, but I have like a lot to say. So eventually I might have to break this into a couple different reviews, but let's go ahead and get started. This bike is, I don't know if I'm in frame, let's see, it's been 60 miles, about, uh, maybe a bit more. But uh, that's really only about 12 or so trips, maybe 10, maybe 8, depending on the length of the trips. And so let's see, a few lists of limitations that go from annoying to not bad at all. The handlebars, aren't like attached, that is definitely annoying. I will eventually fix that, but I keep forgetting to and then needing to ride it and trying to glue them or whatever and then riding it right away wouldn't be good. Another annoying thing is it's really squeaky. Like really, really squeaky. So um, if you're the kind of person that little noises drive you nuts, you're not going to like riding this. Uh, the Cyclomatics is available on Amazon, I'll link it, and it's about 550 and that's it. Now, for a bike that does what it does, that is an incredible price. It's older battery technology and older motor technology, which is why the price is so low. Your average bike that's like this, I'm going to come closer because I'm afraid my microphone might not be picking up. The average bike like this is more like... 3,000, 1,200 at the lowest, and that's not even like a really good battery, but this with the older battery technology is still, I mean, it's a brand new battery, it's just the older generation, and it's very affordable. Now, battery and motor mean that this bike is 57 pounds. The least weight that I saw them at, at all, was... Uh, 47 and that's if it has an aluminum frame. Now with the folding bike you see a lot more of the steel frames. I think it's because that buckle in the middle which you're looking at right here is uh, you really need for that to be pretty strong so I think that's why they're making them steel because they'd have to really go to a much higher level of uh, expensive material for a frame in order for it to be that strong otherwise. Even then, most of the weight isn't in the frame. That's only an added 10 pounds from aluminum to steel. Most of the weight is in the motor and the battery. The battery is only about seven pounds, so it's mostly in the motor. Um, there is no compatibility with uh, quick release pannier bags. So um, I did have to get a loop over bag because it bent and sort of a little bit broke my old quick release pannier bag. Uh, was just a one-sided one for a computer and it just the support bars on the rack on the back extend past the long ways ones like here's the wheel and then the brackets that hold it up go out too far and so in order to attach the quick release or anything based on hooks you have to really bend it and that um my pattern bag didn't like that at all <laughs> uh, it doesn't have any suspension and that's very noticeable Oof. Um, you get used to it, but it's it's quite uncomfortable at first. The battery indicator on the handlebars and on the battery itself, there's two of them. Neither of them are great. Uh, you kind of have to learn what you're looking at. 
I noticed that when I try and highly stress it up a hill at a higher uh, power level, that's when it starts to tell me it's having a battery problem. But if I reduce the power level, it'll just say it's full again. This battery is a little bit more, this reader is a little bit more sensitive, but um, it again doesn't really indicate that it's getting low until it's pretty far into getting low. So knowing what it can do is something you want to ease yourself into so that you're not getting stranded. Let's see what else. It has six gears. They're useless. Legit useless. Uh, you could use those if it were off, I would say, but as long as the motor's on, trying to I have it in the most difficult gear and I can't keep up with the motor most of the time. So I would actually like to see it have bigger gears and not go as low. Now, if it were to have the battery die and I had to get up the hill on my own with a 57 pound bike and groceries, I would probably want that lower gear at that point so I can see why they're kind of balancing out on that. Um, and you can turn it off. There's a little bit more of a delay for the motor kicking in because basically when the interface is on, you have three choices, low, medium, high. You have to turn the interface fully off for it to stay off or just not pedal. So I generally just try to not pedal at all in the downhill because what's the use in engaging the motor when you got 57 pounds yanking you down a hill at full speed, just save the battery. And then I try and keep it in low as much as possible. The amount of distance range that I have changes significantly based on which um, power level I'm using. So on low, hey, we're like a third of the way through the page, woohoo. On low, I can do two big hills and my hills are really big two big hills and maybe about five or six miles in between. And then probably more like three though. Five, it doesn't matter how many miles in between if you just disengage and pedal on the flat. I leave it in low because even just tiny little inclines, they're a lot of work with a bike this heavy. Um, on high, so I use high when I have to be integrated with traffic. I feel a lot safer if I can get up to 20 miles an hour and there isn't a car passing me every 10 seconds along the road. Like it gives a break between having a car right here. Because even though the law is leave four foot, they don't. They just, they don't. They're like right there. So it is nice to put it up into high gear. And when that's the case, I just go ahead and take it in where I'm going and plug it into a wall. There's a place right across the river that I do have to like get up to speed on an uphill, going across a bridge because the only way to do, uh, and then I have to merge into highway, like into basically an on-ramp that's coming off of the highway. I don't do that during high traffic. I do that really off hours, not when there's a lot of traffic, but it's much more comfortable trying to do that at 20 mile an hour than at like half a mile an hour because you're trying to drag this thing up a big hill and you're out of shape. Um, <laughs> so I go ahead and put it in the high gear for that and then I charge it while I'm there because I, the one time I did not charge it, the battery barely made it up my hills to get back home at the end of the night. So I decided to start charging it when I'm there and that way I don't have to risk being at a speed that's really uncomfortable for the traffic situation that I'm in. Uh, so yeah, I would say this thing can do two hills on a charge easily and then just keep in mind that how much motor you use and at what speed in between those two hills. And we're not talking small hills, we're talking like I'm in a semi pseudo mountainous city and I've gotten up to the top of two hills per charge several, several times, different varieties of hills. So as long as you're barely using the motor in between those hills, you've got two hills. If you start to use the motor moderate to large amount, that second hill isn't gonna work for you. Uh, if you use the motor a lot in between your hills. 
And also, you know, don't engage the motor going downhill. There's no use eating the battery for going downhill. So coming up hills. Um, so one thing is that this pedal needs to go at least a full pedal for high, half a pedal for low. I don't know why the amount of pedaling for high and low is different in order for the motor to engage. Now on a steeper incline or a strange angle across a steeper part of an incline, I'm not up for that. It's really, really hard to get the darn thing to actually engage the motor because of how much weight it is and trying to get it moving in the first place. On a moderate to medium incline or pointed sideways across an incline and then stretch, straighten yourself out, those are both very doable, but it is, it is difficult and it takes some coordinating. Um, and that's even on high, it's just, it's just tricky. <laughs> It takes less of a pedal around if you're in low, so if you want to get started and just stick it in low and then increase it back up, um, you do have to be pedaling on a steeper hill. And once the battery gets low, the amount of work starts to be a bigger proportion. Now that said, I live on a 220 foot rise and I've done two out of three of the different steepnesses that come up to my house and I haven't had to stand up in my seat yet. So uh, it's, it's a lot of work and I'm definitely sweating at the top for a steeper uh, incline, but um, it's not so much work that I have to stand up. And I'm not super strong in my legs. I'm stronger in my arms for some reason. Uh, you probably do want to consider whether or not you can charge once you get somewhere. Uh, so what happened last night that I said it saved my butt last night I misread a bus schedule and I got to the bus stop after the last bus had gone I saw it go by but I thought I had another one sat there for a minute and went wait a second double check the schedule and I had just missed the last bus turns out it wasn't a problem it would have been a 20 minute walk to get to the next bus stop that had a second bus option coming through it was about a five minute bike ride and so yes i can get this on the front of a bus i take the battery out and i take this bag off and i just leave it up open not folded and it's 50 pounds and um so check if you can lean forward a bit pick up 50 pounds at a wide range lean forward and then set it in in a controlled manner turns out it's really difficult with 57 but with 50 it's very doable for me so i do take the battery out um but i'm Upper body strength is much better than lower body strength on me, and I'm pretty strong. So, you know, check yourself. See what you think. I was a little worried I wouldn't be able to, but it wasn't it wasn't that difficult. Um, so I had charged it at my friend's house, and so that extra zipping through town, going five minutes for what would have been a 20-minute walk through through an area that didn't feel that safe had I been having to go that slow. Because there were people like waving and looking like they wanted to follow me, but they were walking slow and I was biking, it wasn't a problem. So, yeah, let's see. It is really fantastic having a bike that has three speeds. Um, at least more than one, because a lot of these low-end cheaper bikes just have one speed, and I'm betting that's high and I'm betting I would barely be able to use the motor without eating up the battery to death uh, every single trip. So having those three options, I've seen ones with five, but uh, why did I choose the cyclomatic? Well, the primary thing that I decided based on was that the assembly shop for Amazon, Amazon has them sent to a bike shop for assembly and checking them, said that Cyclomatic was the only brand name that she had worked with, and she had worked with about seven, that had good customer service and reasonable cooperation with returns for faulty product. Another good thing about Cyclomatic is that it's an American brake system, which means the, hey, the right brake is the rear wheel thing that I grew up on is true here too. Anything that's coming out of Europe or Asia is um, the left brake is the rear wheel. 
Uh, and so that can be really hard to get used to if you're used to doing your more gentle stops using the rear wheel. I did have someone ask about, oh, that's annoying, gosh darn you paper, ask about the placement of the um, pedals. And I couldn't figure out why I hadn't really noticed. And then I realized I'm the lazy type of peddler that just puts the arch of my foot on the pedal. And you know, you're really supposed to have your toes on it. And because I put the arch of my foot on the pedal and just loop my heel across the back of it, I can't even tell the placement of the pedals is different. But if I try and put my toes on the pedals, then it's really difficult. So just don't tilt your foot forward though, because then your toes drag on the ground. I'm used to that because that's how I've always pedaled. I'm a lazy person. Whatever. Um, all right, where are we? Okay. It is clumsy and difficult to fold. I think I'll go ahead and show that at the end of this video if it hasn't gotten too long. And, um,. I do take the panner bags and the battery off to get it on the rack for the bus. And yeah, it's a 50 pound deadlift without the battery. I think we covered everything. Let me see how long this is and see if I can, oy, see if I can show you how to fold it. It's not terrible yet. So if you don't care about folding the bike, then you can cut out right now. I'm gonna go ahead and show you about folding the bike and how it rolls. I have, oops, that's not what I want to do. I have the panner bags, which you can't carry much without them. So I do recommend getting a panner bag set. Uh, this one is a really nice waterproof one with a cover, for, and I got it for 60. So. If you're interested, I can go ahead and put a link to that. I did have to put a protective guard so that the chain doesn't um, rub on the bag. So, let's see, the first part is here. I'm going to take my helmet off of here. Set all of that off to the side. The first part is, I lift up on a button here and then you notice I was holding this drop it down and the second part is I lift up on this swing the gate out and while holding part of the bike lift up on the entire mechanism there and at this point I put up Come on, the kickstand, because it was holding it. And I've got one hand on the post and one hand right at that hinge for the handlebar. And I realize I've forgotten something. I need to fold the pedals. There we go. So that's one pedal. There's the other pedal. You just push the pedal in and then fold it down. At this point, we have a folded bike that is not attached. This part's floppy and it's difficult to handle. So the way I handle it is I'm holding the seat and this little grab point and I'm leaning it so that the top floppy part, the front of the bike, is leaning against the rear. At which point, also, you can only roll it forward without jamming the pedal into the folded parts of the bike. Makes it really hard to unfold if you end up rolling it backwards. Come on now. If you end up rolling it backwards and jamming it all up. So there, I'm going to go ahead and just refold it. Someone suggests that I look for clips. I don't think I'm going to do that. 
So let's take a hopefully closer look here. The locking mechanism here out and then you just grab this and lift the whole thing up but only while holding it otherwise everything just kind of falls. <laughs> the pedals have these like puzzle piece things going for them and they just snap in once you let go and there's like this puzzle piece where it receives in the back and this is just spring loaded so you squeeze it and push it's really hard one handed and push down and then just pull up and it springs back into place and then the handlebars like this this dot keeps wanting to come off it's like a silicone pad because this bit hits pretty hard just squeeze real hard or lift up on this and then squeeze mm. there we go so the release is pulling up here no pulling down there my bad and you just pull out really hard once you do that I can't do that one-handed so the handlebars are the most tightly locked I do highly recommend if you get this bike the same time to spend the eight dollars to get a secondary headlight because yeah that's a headlight and the set that gets the tail light with it as well it's just eight bucks to get that this is only a reflector and if you're like me and going to use it for social outings and be back after dark you want to be legal you want to be safe you want to not get hit by a car you want to do that at the very minimum it does come with a three-point bungee strap that goes up over here and this spring lock um i've got it in a pocket of my larger bag because putting that larger bag on just knocks the thing off and then it's dangling underneath and hard to get out charge does take a really long time but uh you know if you plan and you charge it when you don't have it fully dead then it doesn't take as long and that is the cyclomatic cx2 folding bicycle and i hope that this was helpful for somebody if you have more questions let me know i can either pop into the comments or if it's a big enough question i could do another video and i don't mind if you end up wanting to share this go ahead you know it's just my personal youtube but i don't I don't mind helping because I've noticed that there is literally nothing out there about actual users having this bike. I don't have a rigging yet to show me actually on it or anything like that without it being dangerous. I have noticed that when I'm on it, now I'm 200 and this bike's rated to 220, and I have noticed that there's a bit of extra noise involved when I'm on it than when I'm not, and it sounds like gears rubbing, and I have not been able to identify what that sound is. So, um, but I have been able to get groceries in that bag there and just go ahead and get the whole way up the hill, me, groceries, bike, and not, not unreasonable. So just some, some thoughts, some input, and I hope it's helpful, and I hope you're having a great day. Happy September 2nd, and I may as well have a peek at the view while we're at it. Okay, bye.